What's up everybody? My name is Matt and you guys are watching Show Me Firearms. It's been a minute since I've uploaded a video and sorry about that. Uh, life's just been crazy with trying to get ready to finish up college here in about a month or so and yeah, it just gets crazy and you know, sometimes it's just hard to get around to making a video. But we're making it happen today guys and today's video is all about my Ruger AR556. It's been a minute since you guys have seen this gun on the channel, because if you don't know, 5.56.223 is extremely difficult to find right now. And if you do find it, it's gonna cost you an arm and a leg. And that's probably an understatement. Anyway, we're gonna dive into all the mods and upgrades I've done to this gun, because it is very different since you guys last saw it. I've done so much of this. I just wanted to share it with you guys today, let you know um, the aftermarket mods have done to it in case you guys may be looking to upgrade your own AR-15. So with that out of the way, let's dive right into it. So before we dive into the mods and upgrades I've done on my AR-556, I just wanted to tell you guys a little bit about what you can expect to come stock on this AR-15 from Ruger. So the AR-556 comes with a standard M4 style collapsible stock with mil-spec buffer tube, comes with a Magpul MOE grip, which is nice because most low-end budget entry-level AR-15s come with the standard A2 style grip, which has that annoying little thing sticking out on it. I don't know what you call it. It's like a little piece of plastic sticking out on the grip, which a lot of people find to be very annoying. So it is nice that the AR-556 comes with a slightly better grip straight out of the box. And then like most AR-15s, the AR-556 comes with a forward assist, brass deflector, standard mil-spec charging handle, and flip lever safety. All that stuff is gonna be pretty standard on any budget level AR-15, so really nothing out of the ordinary there. One nice thing I like about the AR-556 is that it comes with an anodized aluminum upper and lower receiver. Now the lower and upper, since they're full metal, feel very, very sturdy. It feels great in the hand. Um, a lot of lower end AR-15s come with, you know, maybe a polymer lower, not the AR-556. It's all metal, upper and lower, which is great. So moving on to the internals, the AR-556 comes with a standard mil-spec trigger. It's probably like a five to eight pound pole, and it's just, bleh, it's a bad trigger, uh, to put it bluntly. Now, this is not a knock against the AR-556 whatsoever, because the mil-spec triggers, they work. They're not nice, but they work, and they do the job. And also, that's just the trigger that you're gonna find in probably almost all ARs in this price point. So, it's not a knock against the AR-556, because that's just kind of the nature of the budget level AR-15. The AR-556 comes with a steel bolt carrier group with chrome plated internals, and like pretty much every AR-15 out there, it shoots both 5.56 and 2.23, so that's great. The AR-556 comes with a full length Picatinny rail with free floated M-lock rail system. So as you can see here, we've got the full length pick rail, so you can mount whatever kind of accessories you want to. And then we have the M-Lock mounting system on the front here. So just know that um, if you're wanting to slap on a uh, foregrip or sling, whatever you might want to do, flashlight, um, just know that you will need the M-Lock configuration on those accessories. <laughs> Now we're gonna move on to all the mods and upgrades I've done on my AR-556. We'll start with the stock and kind of work our way forward. So the stock I put on here is the Magpul STR, and I love it. It feels really solid, it's really durable, no complaints about it whatsoever. It's fully adjustable, it has QD mounts on both sides, and it's even got some cool little storage compartments so you can store extra batteries for your optic or whatever you want. Moving forward to the grip, the Magpul MOE grip is great. I know a lot of people love it. I liked it too, but I personally wanted something just a little bit better. So I decided to go with the Fab Defense AGR43 grip. This grip has got some nice texturing on both the back and the front, and it's all rubberized so that, you know, if your hands are sweaty or whatever, 
you're always gonna be able to have a good grip on this. So definitely recommend the AJR43 if you're looking to upgrade your AR15 grip. Moving upward from the grip, we now have a Radian Raptor charging handle. This is a great charging handle. It's ambidextrous, so you can grab it with either your left or right hand, whatever suits you. Solid steel, it's very, very sound, very solid feeling in the hand. Absolutely recommend the Radian Raptor charging handle. So of course, I got rid of that mil spec trigger as soon as possible, and I upgraded to a Timney Competition trigger. This is a great trigger. It's about a uh, three pound pole, single stage, flat face, has a nice crisp reset, which is so satisfying. The other nice thing about the Timney Competition trigger is that it's modular, so you don't have to fumble around with a bunch of little springs and you know all that stuff. It's all self-contained. You just drop it right in there and you're good to go. So let's just go ahead and demonstrate our Timney trigger here. All right, we have a clear weapon, so we are safe to go ahead and dry fire. All right, flat face trigger, which I really like the feel of, and it is a single stage trigger, so unlike a two stage, there's not gonna be any take up. It's just gonna be one motion to bring it to the rear and to send that hammer home. So let's go ahead and apply a little bit of pressure here. That's it. That is so satisfying, only about a three pound pull. And we'll go ahead and take a look at the reset here. Okay, releasing. That's it. There is hardly any travel on that reset and it is so crisp and satisfying. I absolutely love this trigger. Highly recommend it. So let's dive into the optics I've installed on the AR556. So on both the rear and the front, we have diamond head flip up iron sights. These particular sights are made out of polymer. Diamond Head does make metal sights, which you know would be a little more durable, but I went with a polymer just to try to keep the cost down. I don't anticipate having an issue with um, these sights breaking on me unless I were to be throwing the gun around or something, which if you take care of your equipment, I don't think you have to worry about it. So my primary optic on the AR556 is a Vortex Spark AR2 red dot. It's a two MOA dot with adjustable brightness, takes one AAA battery, it's shock resistant and waterproof. So that's awesome. So if you're shooting in the rain or whatever you're doing, you don't have to worry about the moisture getting in and messing up your optic. Of course, as you know, Vortex makes great stuff. So you really can't go wrong with the Spark AR2. So moving forward, we have a Magpul AFG angled foregrip on the underside of our M-Lock rail here. It's got nice texturing underneath it so you can get a nice solid grip on there. Highly recommend it. It's really comfortable for shooting. For the sling, we have a AR Stoner M-Lock QD mount up here, so you can slap your sling on there. And for the sling, I'm running the Vickers Tactical Sling by Blue Force Gear. It's a one and a quarter inch webbing, fully adjustable using the little pull tab here. That's awesome, because as you're wearing it, you can just pull it up and down to either to swim in or out of your sling. You can adjust on the fly. I really like it, great option. Well, there you have it, guys. Those are the mods and upgrades I have decided to install on my Ruger AR556. What do you guys think about the choices I made in these with these mods and upgrades? Would you guys choose the same things? Would you choose something different? Let me know in the comments down below. And while you're at it, tell me about the mods and upgrades you've done on your own ARs. That's the cool thing about the AR platform is that there are so many aftermarket parts and accessories that you can modify these things in nearly infinite ways. So let me know in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching guys. Really appreciate you being here. And until next time, show me them firearms. Woo! What a way to send off a monster mower, am I right? much freedom.